We're now going to focus on the Sources panel. And this is a really good panel for allowing us to make adjustments to our web page code in real time. So what I mean is we can actually change the contents of the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, and so on. It has some added functionality to allow us to try things out. And if it doesn't work, we can step back to previous revisions of our changes. And we also have the option of saving our changes to external files so that maybe we could use that in our project. Not only that, you'll see that on the right hand side, we have some debugging tools as well that allow us to debug JavaScript on our page. So let's start off with what we got on the left hand side. Here we have a tree view that we can expand showing the different elements that make up our web page. And on the right hand side, you can see the JavaScript tools to allow us to debug our code. Both of these panels can be expanded and collapsed. So if I click this little button here, the JavaScript panel gets removed, click it again, and then it appears and we can resize it however we like as well. Same on the left hand side. So if we want to focus on the file, click the button and then we can just focus on whatever's in the middle panel here. Now I said that the sources panel lets us make code changes to our web pages in real time. So let's have a look how we can do that. So what I'm going to do first of all is find out the actual file that contains the code that I want to work with. So for this example, let's say we want to work with this discount link to the full course text, this piece here. So what I'm going to do is right click, choose inspect element, and that will take us to the elements panel. Now we don't want to work here. What we actually want to do is work in the sources panel. So what we need to do is actually click on the link that this elements panel gives us. Now you notice on the right hand side, it's not showing me the CSS. I've noticed um, there are some little bugs sometimes that I need to make this inspector panel disappear, the development tool. So I'll press control shift I, bring it back again. And as if by magic, the CSS reappears. So what I'm gonna do now is right click the inspect element again. And now it's showing me the CSS. And you'll see here we have the links to the individual files where this CSS code is located. So when I give this a click, it'll take us over to the sources panel. It loads up the CSS file containing the CSS for this element, and it positions the cursor exactly where this bit of CSS code is located. That's pretty neat. Now, I said we can make changes, so let, let's do that. As you can see, this WP caption text, we've got a font size of 12. So if I edit this, make it 15, you'll see it automatically applies it in real time. If I make it 25, exactly the same thing. Now, one of the good things here is if I press Control S, it's going to save a version of this file. So I'll do Control S, and now you'll see we have this little triangle and that means that we've actually saved this version with the font size 25. Now, if I make it font size 35 and do Control S again, it's saved another version. You didn't actually see anything happen, but it saved a version of this file for us. And now let's, let's say we want to do another one with a line height of 26. Do Control S again, and it saved another version. So let's see where these versions are. So what we can do is right click anywhere within this panel and we can show local modifications. And when we do that, it shows us a list here. I saved three individual versions and we got a link here to the original and we can apply each one of these versions as we wish. So if I want to go back to the start, I can just click on this link, apply original content and we're back to the beginning. If I want then to go to the first change that I made, I can click the little expand icon here. It shows us a diff file showing us the difference between how it was originally and how it was after the change. And we can see we went from 12 to 25 pixels and I can just click apply revision content and it applies it. And you'll notice every single time I'm clicking these buttons, it's creating a brand new version again. So it's actually going around in a big circle. But it's real handy if we want to try something and just, let's have a look, 
apply revision and just apply that actual change instead of going back and typing it all in again. Now let me click this little button here to hide this drawer that's popped out. And let's say we're happy with the modifications in this style sheet. Well, what you can do is right click, choose save as, and then you can save this file to your desktop anywhere you want and use it as you wish. Now let's switch attention from the content here and have a look at the JavaScript debugging tools on the right hand side. Now we won't go into an awful lot of detail here, but we'll go through the main features. So this debug panel lets us step through our JavaScript code and debug it for any errors and watch any variables and things like that. So here you can see we have a pause button to pause our script as it's been executed. We have step over, step into, step out. This is while we're debugging our code line by line. We can remove all breakpoints and we can also pause our code on exceptions. Now at the moment, as it's like this, it's not turned on, so it's saying don't pause on exception. If I give it one click, it then shows us it will pause on normal exceptions. Then if I give it a click again, it's then going to show us it will pause only on uncaught exceptions. Then clicking it again, we go back to the start. You'll see that we can have watch expressions and we can click the button to create them if we want. We can see the call stack of where we are. Now I'm not debugging here, so none of this information is filled out, but we will have a look at that. We can set breakpoints, have a look at scope of variables, set breakpoints within the document itself. And we can have a look at event listeners and set breakpoints on specific events as well. So let's have a look at how we do some debugging. So if I close this, what I'm gonna do is open this panel and let's say I want to set a breakpoint. Let's have a look at this Facebook code here. So I'm going to expand this out. We'll see the JavaScript and this is Facebook JavaScript code. And if I want to set a breakpoint, all I need to do is come down into the line of code that I want. And let's say I'll set a breakpoint right here. All I need to do is click with the left mouse in the gutter and it sets the breakpoint. And if you look over on the right hand side, you can now see in this breakpoints panel, it shows the file where the breakpoint is and it shows the line of code where the breakpoint is as well. So we actually have the file name, the line number, and then it's trying to represent what line we are on. Now we need to run our JavaScript code. So what I'm going to do is refresh the page. And as I do this, as the page is loaded in, it's going to execute this piece of JavaScript. And you'll see right now, before it's finished loading in, you'll see we've got no images. It's actually paused the execution of this document being loaded right on at this line of code. And then we can use our debug buttons up here to actually step through the lines of code line by line. So you can see we can use the F11 key or just press the button and we can go through one line at a time. Now you'll see here, if you're familiar with JavaScript, we've actually got many different JavaScript functions or statements on a single line. So even though I'm stepping through, it's actually pre <laughs> executing as it works its way along this line. Normally, if you're debugging JavaScript code, you'll know yourself that you will have your JavaScript nicely formatted. And then once you've got rid of all the bugs, Maybe then you would do a minify to get rid of all the white space, which is pretty much what's happened here. If we're happy with the debugging, we can then just click this button here to resume processing and it'll finish loading the rest of the page. If we have any breakpoints further down in the code or maybe in a different file that's executed after the one we just stepped into, then the breakpoint would pause there as well and we can carry on. Let me do F5 refresh again, so we can trigger this breakpoint. And let's have a look at some of the other elements on the right hand side. You can see here under scope variables, we've now got lots of local variables that are being used in the document that you can expand and interrogate and see if they're causing any issues with your code. And the same with global variables as well. 
can see we've still got the breakpoint. And if we're, let's see, let's say we're down here, you can click the breakpoint and it'll take you back to that line of code. Then as we move down, there are different elements that we can set breakpoints on. So while we're here, let's set one on the onload event. So here we go. Now, just before we execute a refresh here so that we can debug the load event, let's stop processing this run that we have here and we'll turn off this debug point on line 13. Let's get out of this run state. I'll tell you what, let's turn off that load event because that's stopping things chugging along. There we go. We'll turn it back on. And now when I do a page refresh, there we go. We're now, um, we're now paused at the point where this load event has been fired. If we scroll up, you can see this call stack. We are paused on the load event listener. So from there, you'll be able to step through your code and see what's going on. Now, I don't want to go any further into the debugging. That gives you a flavor of what's going to happen. So we will leave things there for this sources panel. And the next one we're going to look at is the timeline panel.